Alright, um... Huh. This hand... Is this a Sneep? I don't know, it's tough, right? Like, this hand needs lands, but it also needs to draw spells. I guess if we had a cantrip, we're pretty happy. Yeah, I'm gonna keep this. If we had any of our six cantrips, we'll be pretty happy. Uh, this Blue Moon donation deck list was a $50 donation. $50 donation cuts you in line and gets you to the next deck that we are playing on stream. If you want to learn more about how donation deck lists work, you can uh, check out uh, bit.ly forward slash who will sell out. Hey, calm, calm down. Yep, that's okay. That's a kite. Yep. This hand is pretty good against, uh, pretty good against discard. All right, one of, one of the three down, got it. <laughs> There's a floof on your lap. His hair is kind of crazy, huh? This is Jacob, this is my oldest. There's a reason why his picture is part of the loud, the loud emote. Put this into play tapped and pass the turn. Yeah, remind me after the stream it's on the day and I'll check it out. Not having a third land is good for us. Losing our cryptic command kind of sucks, so that was gonna be our way to take this off the board. I guess I get to bolt snap bolt this. I'm just gonna start fetching basic islands. Can I pick the next 15 decks and what Jacob studies in college? <laughs> hey, hey, you do not get the roll of paper towels, monster. This is not, this is not how this works. Yeah, you're funny, I know. I think we're just double bolting this, right? I just can't afford to keep taking hits from this. <laughs> I am a patient man, child. But you, you are testing me. This is Blue Moon that we are playing. Did I update the stream decker? I think I did. Yeah, I did. Oh, uh, God, I say Liliana the Veil would be rough here. This is way more rough. That's, well, that was a good draw. Having a bunch of six drops in your deck is great. Five and six drops, just like, all right, here's my bomb, go. Your move, dealer. Well, unfortunate. Probably gonna slide this back and then grab the Tarmogoyf back into play. Really? Okay, they just have another Goyf to play out. Okay. I guess there might have been an argument for like vision snap visions last turn. Blood Moon. That's pretty decent. I'm just gonna go top top here. I'm gonna go top top and then like 
fetch a basic island and cast this blood moon like serum visions draw the blood moon and then crack this fetch cast the blood moon and like hope to rip a worm coil or something like that i think that's the line there's a torrential gear hulk there is that good enough to keep huh the torrential gear hulk makes me want to not crack the fetch right praise be our lord and savior blood moon prototype in session with the eight month resubscription thanks a lot and welcome back but i do appreciate it yeah, okay, now that that's on top, I'm just going to go top, top. And I'm going to go ahead and just uh, not shuffle. Yep. And now I just get to... Now I just get to Gear Hulk bounce this. They get to Gear Hulk's Cryptic Bounce the Liliana. I'm gonna pass the turn here. Looks like they're going for the ultimate. I suppose I could also bounce the Goyf and then Hulk plus Germ kill the Liliana. That doesn't seem awful. I think that's actually the line. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's the line. Because they can't really punish us here, right? I think I like killing her in combat. Because eventually they could draw a swamp and, like, tap this. Yeah! Look, Bola Slave, Modern is a format where, regardless of the deck you are playing, there's going to be some amount of decks that you just don't beat when you play against them. And that's just how the format works. It's okay, it's a feature, it's not a bug. When your format has so many different decks in it, some amount of the time, no matter what you're playing, you're gonna lose to something. So if this deck loses to graveyard decks, guess what? You're gonna lose to graveyard decks, that's okay. If you really wanted to skew your sideboard with a bunch of angers and if you fear graveyard decks more than you fear more than you fear Tron and colorless decks, play a bunch of surgical extractions and anger of the gods in these slots. Like you have your 15 sideboard slots, you pick what you're willing to beat and you pick what you're willing to lose to every time you register for a magic tournament. That's just how it goes. If you're if you're looking to play a deck that has some amount of game against everything in the field, you just you you are gonna be frustrated with modern because that's that's not how modern works. I'm trimming a Blood Moon here. And I think that it's fine to leave these two in because turning off their creature land seems good, and we might choke them on color sometimes, but I don't think it's so good that I want all three in my deck still. I think just bringing in these harvest pyres as extra removal is fine. I don't think I want these other cards. You can maybe make an argument for negate, but I don't think that's worthwhile. I'm just gonna go ahead and click submit. No, Death Shadow has matchups that are very bad for it too. It has less of them than some of the other decks in the format, but it definitely has matchups that are very bad for it. This Relic's gonna do some work this game, hopefully. I actually really like Relic in this main deck as a way to hedge Tarmogoyf, so it seems sweet. And people are so lazy. That wasn't a whiny rant. That was just, that's just how modern works. It's okay. I was explaining how modern works. And people that don't think that that's how modern works, you're unrealistic. Is that time to restart Magic Online? It might be time to restart Magic Online. Ooh, almost two gigs of RAM again. I think, I think we're gonna... MTGO's gonna take a quick dirt nap here. Enjoy my fractals. There's some matchup variance in Legacy, but in general, I actually think Legacy is a little bit less diverse than Modern because the good decks in Legacy are so much better than everything else. Like, the Deathrite Shaman Fair Mush that exists in Legacy right now is really obnoxiously powerful. Mom. 
if, if you don't like the sideboard lottery thing, you just can't play modern. That's just, that's just how it is. So this is fine. This resolves. Maybe, maybe it resolves. So now the question becomes, do I let this draw a card so I can mana leak or remand something next turn? I feel like I'm supposed to let this draw a card, which feels bad, but I think because I have these, I just need to let this happen. Nile Spellbomb, sure. Everybody with the graveyard hate. That's because a lot of modern decks are memes, right? Like... So if they don't play into my counter spells here, we'll bolt this at end step. If they do play into one of my counter spells, we'll bolt it on my next turn while still holding up a two mana counter spell. Just gonna reman this, I think. Make them play it again next turn. I mean, saying saying modern is skillless is just, oh, I forgot to activate this. That was loose. I wasn't paying attention. That could actually really hurt us, the fact that I am down a relic activation. It's like, this shouldn't be in their graveyard right now, which affects the sides of their Tarmogoyf. Anyone that tells you that modern has the absence of skill, that's just wrong. Every every format in Magic involves involves skill. Like, there's... And there aren't enough bad matchups that, like, you're not going to be able to win. But, like, some amount of your games are just going to be non-games because you just aren't, don't have a good matchup, right? Like, that's just how it works. And that's okay. They might just t leave the Blood Moon here since they have, since they have this and I don't have Triple Blue yet. Feels like they just take the Harvest Pyre here. We know they have a Tarmogoyf in their hand. They took my Opt. Interesting. I want to get three islands into play before I play this Blood Moon out. That's unfortunate. Yeah, streaming on the weekends when there's no one else on is good, good for viewer numbers. Oh my god, I punted. Did anyone see how I punted? If I would have fetched, if this was the only card in my deck that punished me, because there's only one of these, if I would have fetched before blowing the Nihil spell bomb up, I could have killed this Tarmogoyf with that Electrolyze. But because of the way I sequenced, I'm not able to. Ooh, ooh, this is spicy though. This is spicy. So the Snapcaster Mage here means I can snap this Electrolyze and kill the Tarmogoyf though. That's what this means. Don't yell in my ear, child. Oh. Oh, they have that, too. It still shrinks this. They don't get to draw a card with Niles Bob, but I think that's fine. Sorry about that little little child wrangling there. Oh, this tracker's probably gonna bury us. We need to hit a. Uh, we need to hit a uh, 
Gear Hulk or Worm Coil or something. Worm Coil would be great. Batter Skull is also decent. Dracker is very good. Just remand any three mana spell here, basically. No, Karanos isn't very good right now. It doesn't impact the board. Tireless Tracker is fine. Tireless Tracker is, is the type of card that's everything that I want to be good in Modern. If this card is great in Modern, Modern is in a great spot. There is nothing wrong with a format where people want to generate grindy amounts of card advantage. Like, that's, that's great. That's a format that encourages fair, interactive Magic the Gathering. I'm just going to remand this. Might be wrong. Funny. Ding. Fries are done. Turns out having a bunch of bombs in our deck is good. Can we do it again? Can we get the second worm coil? Right, they're at 11. These are my cards. They have two pulses. They could pulse the worm and then pulse the worm again next turn. Pulsing the blood moon. Okay, interesting. Oh, it lets them get another draw. Okay, that's neat. Oh, and play a giant goif. Yep, fair. This could be anything. Love a cryptic command. Thank you. Field of Rune is kind of funny with... Uh... Field of Rune is kind of funny with Tireless Tracker. Tapping six lanes, is that how you're supposed to play Worm Coil? Lol. Mmm. Yeah, that one's... That one's gonna stop my Snapcaster Mages, so let's just nip that one in the bud. Gross. Got like exactly Harvest Pyre to beat this. Pulse does kill both tokens. They both they are both named Worm. All right, on the play, Mana Leak gets a little bit better. Gonna trim another Blood Moon. I don't think it's actually very good in this matchup. There are only two colors. They were like Abzan, I'd leave two or three in, but against just it's just green black, it's a little bit less impactful. Yeah, it seems pretty good. I mean, kind of. Like I feel like you'd have to have like all of them in, and even then they're just such miserable top decks later. Not like super interested in that. Oh. 
I don't actually know. I don't have experience playing these archetypes. So, I'll be right back. I have to fix the fort. Can you fix your fort? And you're that not even gonna forget to relic. They must have a bomb, right? Watching the morning vibes, we talked about Stoneforge and want a little input. I don't think it should be unbanned, not necessarily because it's too strong, but through the gameplay it leads to is too repetitive, it encourages you to do the same thing every time. I mean Every every good deck in Magic wants to do the same thing every game. Like, are you saying we should ban Death Shadow because it wants you to use your health total as a resource in every single game of Magic you play? Like, is that is that like the logic we're doing? Like, decks that want to do the same thing shouldn't be played. Like, that's that's the line we're going with. That doesn't that doesn't seem good or consistent to me. I think I just want to mana leak this. It's going to generate them a lot of card advantage. I don't want to give them, I don't want to like remand it and give them a chance to do like uh discard spell into Bob again next turn and me not be able to mana leak it. So that I'm gonna go ahead and play the steam vents tapped and then pass the turn with this remand up. Ban burn with that logic, yep. But it isn't, it isn't uh Stoneforge on two test, like the the payoff. For not the, the downside to not killing the Stone Forge means they get a 4 4 Vigilance lifelink. This is a format where games routinely end on the third turn of the game. Like, it's like I would much rather my opponent put a, a Batter Skull into play on turn three than cast Gifts Ungiven, loop to Past in Flames, and actually killed me. Like, that sounds like a much more interesting game of Magic the Gathering. Yes, they can. We have you have Culligan's command. You have you have a braid. You have lightning bolt, path to exile, fatal push. All these ways you can just naturally kill their card. Like there's so many ways to get rid of it. Hello, Declan Scott. You're up. You're on mommy's back. Daddy, a kiss. I'm just gonna. All right, so we're playing the Bob into the Lightning Bolt. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna take a half a second here. Let's look at let's look at the MTG Goldfish top top modern decks. Let's look at the MTG Goldfish top modern decks. Let's go decks, metagame, modern. Grixis Death Shadow doesn't give a crap about your Batter Skull. Affinity doesn't give a crap about your Batter Skull. All right, Just Kai Control. They probably give a crap about your batter skull. Burn has so many ways to kill Stoneforge Mystic. It's not funny. They care about batter skull, but they're already playing a bunch of main deck ways to kill batter skull. Humans, give or take, kinda, but they have a window with with they can reflector mage the germ. They can use the the one two to take it out of your hand. They can meddling mage your stuff. Gift storm doesn't care about your batter skull. Tron doesn't care about your batter skull. Dredge. Really doesn't care about your batter skull. Blue Moon. No, okay. They they skull. care about your batter skull. Mardu Pyromancer has four main deck Culligan's command. That was eight fingers. I banned that guy because they kept saying the same thing after I, I told them different. Batter skull, batter skull, batter skull. I don't I don't understand why. We can, we can like talk about like, okay, if I don't kill Storm's creature on two, they untap and I lose the game. If I don't kill Stoneforge Mystic on two, they put a 4-4 into play. It's so different. Like, like you're telling me the Stoneforge Mystic test isn't fun. It's more fun than the, than the uh, G Goblin Electromancer test. It's just, it's so wild that people will sit there and like look you square in the face and tell you that these other things are okay, but like Batter Skull is too much. 
Oh God, it's like, what are, what are you like? Are you even playing the same format I've been playing? I'm just gonna cycle this. We need some action. What a, what a combo. Just look at our combo deck. Cycle my relic immediately draw Staffcaster Mage. Yep. I think I'm supposed to end step the Snapcaster Mage now. I'm gonna ban you because that's not true. Who, raise your hand in chat if you've ever had Storm kill you while they didn't have a creature in play. I've died plenty of times while they don't have a creature in play. Plenty of times. They can literally just cast rituals and kill you. That's just, oh, we just got so punished for my sequencing here. Hopefully they trade this Liliana for the Snapcaster Mage. Yep, that's really unfortunate for us. We need to draw a bolt like right now. Yeah. I think maybe popping that relic was wrong. I don't know. I needed I needed action. What is what is the reducing diversity point? What decks are gonna suddenly vanish when Stoneforge Mystic comes back? Like, Burn's the only thing close to a combo deck that gives two shits about a batter skull. And guess what? They have tons of ways to kill Stoneforge Mystic and are already main decking somewhere between four and eight skull cracks. Yeah, looks like we're gonna die. I think if I would have waited on that relic, like I just can't know I'm gonna draw the Snapcaster Mage. We'd have been able to snap leak this if I'd have just waited on the relic. Gross. We need to draw Worm Coil like last turn. But I don't. But that's not true. Anyone that thinks if you kill the dork, the storm player can't win the game hasn't played against modern storm because that's not true. If killing the creature on the storm side of the table stopped storm from winning the game, it wouldn't be a playable magic deck. It just it wouldn't be. The reason why storm is a good magic deck is because that's not true. It means they can't win the game that turn. It means they're not going to kill you on three. That's, that's what it means. It means you're not going to lose the game on the third turn of the game. I like how my opponent is paid. My opponent just super punted here. They just paid to draw a card in response to their Liliana trigger to stop me from casting an opt that was going to get discarded from my hand. Kay Mueller with the 313 subscription. Thank you very much and welcome back, but I do appreciate that. And they made their goif small. We're just going to die to this Liliana ult anyways, but it's still funny that they made a play that bad. All right. Well, so you're saying there's a chance. So you're saying there's a chance. After a lightning bolt, this was the single best draw on our deck.
<laughs> You're not wrong. You're not wrong. I mean, that's why we ban people so aggressively, right? All right, so <clears throat> I think I want to just do this so I can and get some three threes here. If they drew Maelstrom Pulse exactly, I'm going to be sad. Yeah, yeah, I completely, completely agree with that assessment. I, I am on board and agree with that assessment. Like, every, the good decks play the good cards. Should we ban Path, Lightning Bolt, Thoughtseize, like, Tarmogoyf, Danky Dankerson, with the brand new Twitch Prime support. Thank you very much and welcome. I do appreciate that. Oh, just running, running good ones there. All right, am I willing to trade this Torrential Gearhawk for this Tireless Tracker? I think I am. It's like I love the argument that people put up about, um, what's it called? About like, the, that was the Splinter Twin argument, right? Like the Splinter Twin is gonna diversify the blue red decks. Well now all the different blue red decks in modern, they just play, they play through the breach instead of playing Splinter Twin combo. So like they play a different combo that's actually harder to interact with in a lot of ways than what Splinter Twin was. We shouldn't be winning this game, you are correct. But my opponent made a giant boo-boo that turn I played the Torrential Gear Hulk and now, now we're kind of, kind of ahead. Cryptic Command, Worm Coil, Batter Skull, Cantrip. Okay, that, uh, that's actually a cantrip that's gonna stop this, uh, the scavenger goose from being too large, right? It's kind of nice. Yeah, I agree, Dazer. Stone Fortress still could be fine in modern. You can read about my thoughts in the modern ban list and what I would change here at Gathering Magic. Relic plus Harvest Pyre is a little bit awkward awkward tension. I wonder if this deck's just supposed to play... The relics seem okay in the abstract. Or a little touch awkward with Snapcaster, but like, I think they're fine. Yeah, I'm gonna hold some lands for Desolate Lighthouse in case we pick it up. We do only have one copy of that card, though. There's also merit to getting up to eight lands in play, though, because eight lands means I can play Batter Skull plus Bounce it in the same turn. Really looking for, like, Cryptic Command, right? So we can just, like, bounce this Tireless Tracker and tempo them out of this game. Ah, they just drew more gas. I'm gonna attack with both of these. Depending on how they block, this lightning bolt could be really good. They do something really stupid like no blocks, we just kill them. Hey, Serpy Boy with the Eight month resubscription. Thank you very much and welcome back. I appreciate the continued support. This is important. I almost made a mistake here. You want to let the damage happen before I bolt this tireless tracker. And the reason for this is um, I want, I don't want them to be able to fatal push my worm token before damage happens. So if I bolt their tracker before damage, they could fatal push before damage happens and blow me out. This scavenging use could still potentially kill us, but like it puts us in a nut spot if we rip like batter skull or other worm coil, right? Also, Cryptic Command is a good draw at this point, too. Just like all of our cards that cost four or more sound great. Is the Donation Dex command not... Can, I, can a mod check and see if that's a mod-only command? Did I accidentally set that up as a mod-only command? Come on, give me a good one. Give me a couple good ones. 
I'm gonna bottom that and then top this opt. Yep. Yeah, exactly, Dazer. Like, Modern is full of cards that are great and people that build decks around them and slot them into other similar things. I'm just remanding anything here because I just want to cycle it. MTG about PMs me. Oh, okay, sweet. We did not play the Legacy Shatter deck yet. I'm not sure if we're going to be able to get to it today or not. That was a great draw. Don't thought seize me. Having a bunch of bombs in this deck is kind of great. Yeah, like these these are the games of magic like like this if this is the type of format that I think my ban list suggestions would push would push the game towards. Is this bulk good? This bolt seems okay. Seems like it could get them on a double block against this worm coil engine. Sure. Yeah, man, you do you. This game was kind of a great example of like, don't concede. Just like, hope your opponent messes up. Because they, they messed up a lot to get to the point in this game that we're at. And now it was just getting to just punish them again and again and again. So we get to eat their, eat their Wormcoil engine here, their Tarmogoyf here. And like their scavenging use is getting large, but like, Wormcoil's got death touch, so, you know, your move, Yugi boy. This is actually... <laughs> you know, I said when we looked at this deck list, I was excited to just, like, drop bombs on people. This is fantastic. What a... Welcome to the mid-ranging, my opponent. Welcome to the mid-ranging. I am just... Yeah, buddy. Yeah, get him. Get him. We finagled our way into this long game, and now we are just, just bringing the beatdowns. I hope the opponent goes back and watches this game, because like that, man, that, I wonder if they know they punted that Liliana turn. Mid-ranging like it's 2013. Hey, 20 Thunder 3 with the brand new 499 month subscription. Thank you very much, and welcome. I really appreciate that. As always, subs are the absolute best way you can support my content here. Get to play this out. Hop in my batter skull jeep. Beep beep. No, I can't snap bolt. Uh, the screws keeps me from snapping bolt. Do I offer the trade of this worm quill? Oh, I should just equip the batter skull, right? Just like do this. It's like attack with both. I don't think only mid range decks should exist. I think formats where mid range decks are the best decks are the most interesting formats. So I don't want a format where only mid-range is competitive, but I do want a format where fair mid-range decks that don't have turn three combo nut draws are the best decks in the format. That's, that's what I want. This, this match that we're playing right now has lasted longer than the last two modern leagues we played. Man, they really don't want to give up the scavenging ooze. <laughs> he 
He's gone. You got him. All right. My worm quail is getting ready to hop into this Jeep opponent. How do you feel about that? That's not true. This Jeep's going to come back to my hand. They have to chump the worm coil anyways, so I'm going to go ahead and bounce this. Opponent does not want to play anymore. All right. Thank you. Thank you everyone for hanging out here today while we battle some modern magic together. We're playing a blue moon donation deck list with some really sweet bombs in it. My name is Jeff Hoagland. If you're enjoying what you see, please make sure you hit that follow button. It doesn't cost you anything else so that people find my stuff. If you're really enjoying what you see, please consider subscribing on Twitch or becoming a patron on Patreon. Those are the absolute best way you can support my content here. You can also support my content by supporting my sponsors. MGGO traders would love to buy and sell magic online cards with you. If you use code Hoagland PayPal at checkout, then you'll save 8% on your singles orders there. Cool stuff, Inc.com buys and sells a lot of cool stuff, including TCG singles. Using promo code Jeff5, you can use 5% on Magic, Pokemon, and Yu-Gi-Oh cards with them. InkedGaming.com would love to help you customize your gaming experience. Using code Jeff12, you can save 12% on custom playmats, mouse pads, binders. They really do it all. You can upload your own custom artwork or choose from the wide range of artwork they have on their website. And finally, SpareDeck.com would love as a unique service they will rent you any physical standard or modern deck you can rent a deck for a weekend or up to an entire month there so it's a great way to try a deck like this before you buy it or if you're someone that changes decks quite often that's fine as well i hate that that like that specific call out on decks did you know when splinter twin was legal jeskai control won a pro tour it didn't mean Jeskai Control was super competitive or even good in that format it meant a Jeskai player that was a good magic player and ran a little bit hot, happened to win a tournament. Control decks have always put up fringe results in modern because magic players, especially good magic players, love playing dirtily control decks because it gives them lots of great decisions to make. Making decisions while I play a game of magic is fun. That's why I'm playing a deck like this. That's why people try to play decks like this even when they're not amazing. Like, Modern is a format full of people that are playing decks that are suboptimal because they just like playing them as Magic decks, and that's okay. There's more to Magic than winning. Enjoying what you're playing is more important than winning every single match of Magic, because guess what? There's enough variance in Magic that even when you're not, even when you're playing the best deck, you're still not winning every game. Just how it works. Oh, is this... Is this, uh, is this Dredge? Do we have our turn one relic against Dredge? God bless us. God bless us, everyone. This is, that's great. So here, the actual, I actually tweeted about this, uh, yesterday or the day before. The problem with magic is that it's really hard to actually get truly objective magic data. And there's two reasons for that. The first reason is that there isn't um, there isn't complete data sets for paper tournaments because it's hard to get complete data sets for paper tournaments. The second reason is that Wizards of the Coast hides a lot of Magic Online data. Like, the data is available for this digital game, but we just don't have it because Wizards hides it. Please play a Cathartic Reunion that I get to remand. We're probably still not a favorite to win this game with Relic on one, which is kind of funny. Energy doesn't make standard miserable, data does, yep. Yep. Okay, so this is probably gonna be where we pull the trigger on this Relic. We're going to get two Amalgams, a Narcomoeba. I can actually bolt. I can bolt this Bloodgast in response and clean it up too. Okay, Worm Coil Engine's a way we could steal this game. If we go like Batter Skull into Worm Coil into Torrential Gear Hulk, we could just race them, right? And yeah, definitely in the market for more lands. Hmm, Snapcaster opt. Are we going to steal game one off of Dredge? Who's excited? I think we might steal game one off of Dredge. Yeah, your, your move.
I am I am excited to maybe steal game one here. Uh, I don't want that. I just want more lands. Perfect. Perfect. You get a couple of good cryptic commands in here. Some lightning bolts. Sign me up. Here, move opponent. We might get conflagrated here, but that's still going to be fine because we have worm coil as a follow up. I do have a conflagrate in their bin currently. All right, I think I'm just going to attack with both of these. They want to double block the batter skull. That's fine. Oh, yeah, this attack makes no sense. Oops. The Snapcaster attack there was bad. Ask me where my brain went. It wasn't all here. Probably going to be okay. They're going to conflagrate to clean up here. Oh, I wonder if I'm not supposed to kill the blood ghast. Yeah, I'm probably not supposed to kill the blood ghast, right? Because then they can't get the amalgam back. I think that's what's supposed to happen. Uh, that being said, I can probably just equip this batter skull and go to town. Plus this lightning bolt. We're gonna double block. Yeah, I think that's the line. I think we're supposed to double block amalgam. Yeah. I think that's that's the correct line. We're supposed to double block amalgam there. That being said, I think I think we have an, an embarrassment of riches here. I think we have an embarrassment of riches. Though they're actually just dead, right? This is seven, ten, and then the bolt is lethal. They can't block. <sighs> Man, my favorite is when they get salty enough to message me afterwards. Just like, it's so easy to ignore you, too. But right. well, we've stolen game one against Dredge. That seems amazing and difficult. Um... We really don't have a lot of good tools here, <laughs> believe it or not. So I'm glad we were able to get exceptionally lucky there. Um, I, I guess I leave in the remands and the mana leaks, which just don't have good cards. All right, I think, I think this is it. I'm going to click submit. I'm going to go fix my, my child's house. Can I fix your, fix your hut, buddy? Oh. Sands D till we get collective brutality with thought seized. This is a donation deck list, so one of my subscribers has sent us money to play this deck. Damn it, we're getting thought seized. Yep, this is why you can't just, yep. They just kept the first hand. I guess we can technically snap anger down the line, but we'll probably be dead by then.
Hello. Uh, they hit an amalgam there too. Yeah, we're probably dead. I need to hit like exactly anger next turn, right? Need to hit our our second copy of anger like right. <laughs> yep. Just dredge doing dredge things. This deck's this deck's really good when it's good. It's very good against decks. Like someone earlier commented that this deck was very bad against graveyard decks, and they they were correct in that assessment. All right, we're going to thin our deck here so we can try and draw an anger of the gods next turn. This good clean. Good clean living. But it gets to draw four cards. Gross. I think Driven to Despair is very good in Dredge. It was reasonable when we were testing it. Taking one more draw step here. Oh good, Blood Moon, they can't cast their spells. Got him. Got him. Bring these mana leaks in on the play. They counter, uh, what's it called? They counter Cathartic Reunions. Why weren't the gods angry? I just wanted the gods to be mad. Just, just one time. Turn one relic. Can't thought seize this one, buddy. <laughs> all, all magic data is flawed just on... <laughs> it has obvious intentional flaws because of Wizards of the Coast. Wizards of the Coast intentionally obscures the data they give you. They're upfront about it, at least, I guess. Well, huh. I think I want to hold Remand for a Cathartic Reunion here rather than play this other Relic out. That might be wrong. That might be wrong, but I think I want to hold Remand here. I should run Graph Digger's Cage. They should have let this resolve first, so that way I exiled my my opt. So small, small sequencing mistake on the part of the opponent here. I'm up front with all magic. Yeah, have a ban. I'm up front with saying all magic data is flawed. Whenever I say things, I talk about feelings because that's all we can really do. Based on my feelings and experience, this is what I think the format is like. Because I can't give you objective data because it doesn't, it doesn't exist. It just, it literally doesn't exist. The only place it could exist from doesn't give it to us. And that's just how it is. Wizards of the Coast, I guess in a way, if Star City wanted to do a bunch of extra work for very little financial gain, why would they do that? They could give us complete data, but like Wizards of the Coast is the one running those large major paper tournaments. They're the ones that can provide that data. I think I'm just leaving this uncracked. We do have Blood Moons in my deck still, right? Actually, I boarded a couple of those out. Hmm. Yeah, I'm not actually sure. Here you go. Mm. What data? Yeah, but any any conclusions you draw on are based on feelings more than facts. Sure. Are they grudging my relic again? Sure. 
It kind of sucks that uh, they have this grudge left over for my batter skull. I guess I just play this out and I can opt snap opt or like remand opt bolt. No, they always they always only post top 64 lists on the first weekend of a new format. Lordy. We had double relic this game. We had double relic this game. I mean, I guess I get five looks at an anger of the gods here, right? I get opt, snapped, op, and then a draw step. I was like, where's my library? It's behind here, got it. <laughs> they didn't have this ancient grudge in their bin, the batter still might be able to buy a some reprieve. <laughs> it's speaking in tongues. <laughs> You're very loud, child. Is this Serum Visions enough, or do I just want a random? It's basically the same as a random, with more selection later. I guess I'll keep it. Okay, Vision Snap Visions gives us some... It's a Worm Coil, that's not terrible. Okay, so if they grudge my Worm Coil, do I want this Batter Skull? I don't want this Electrolyze. Do I want to snap? Do I want to snap this serum, Jacob? They do not have the split card in the discard pile currently. It's a good question, though. Yep. Well, I'm glad I bottomed everything aggressively here. <sighs> you can flag her in and die here, probably. Yeah, we didn't, I didn't choose to keep anything other than Serum Visions, that gave us more relooks, so, you know, we, we're through, like, what, we've bottomed four cards, so we're through 25 cards without an anger now at this point. I'm assuming I'm getting conflagrated for, like, my Snapcaster's dying and me for one, and then we're gonna take 11 on this attack, and then the Ancient Grudge is gonna be able to kill our Worm Coil before it can deal damage next turn when it blocks, so we just have to draw anger or we're gonna die. Alright, well, the out is... The out is lightning bolt my opponent, remand my bolt, draw anger off the remand. And we died. Alright. And again, like this deck seems sweet, but you know, sometimes you're just gonna die. It's just there's matchups that you just can't win. And we tried we tried our best there, but it's a very the next card. The very the very next card in our deck. Just the anger of the gods that we tried so very hard to get to.
<sighs> so, daylight and one card short. Let's try again. I think it's okay. It's not exciting, but fine. Standard is different from non-rotating formats like modern. It just is. It depends on how long the rest of this league takes, what we're doing after it. No, so the reason why we were dead on board there, for those that don't understand, is if you play the Worm Coil engine, opponent will attack with everything, and then before damage, I'll block one of their things, and then before damage happens, they'll Ancient Grudge it after it's blocked, so that way it doesn't deal combat damage, so I won't gain any health. So with correct play, we won't gain life on the opponent's part. Which is why we had to cycle that like I did to find Anger of the Gods. And we didn't, so we died. Maybe at some point that game I could have bottomed one more card. Ancient Stirrings into Gemstone Mine? You're playing some kind of all-in Eldrazi deck, maybe? I think I'm just going to cycle this. I think this is something fair. Do I want to just jam this Blood Moon? Probably. Yeah, probably. Oh, it's Amulet. Okay, that makes sense. So this, so this Blood Moon will be Dece. Definitely Amulet. Yep. Yep. So this is actually really important here. Magic Online is bugged. My opponent isn't supposed to be able to name a card with this, this Cavern of Souls. So this Cavern of Souls is supposed to have nothing named right now, but Magic Online is currently bugged with that interaction. No, Declan, stop! How is Vesuva work with Blood Moon now? Declan, stop! Any, any, anyone know? Sorry. So we're not going to get to draw a card with this, but we are going to take the ballista off the table, so that's good. It's supposed to just be a mountain now, right? Um, I think I'm interested in both of these, right? Go top, top here. You can snap both threads up. You need me to fix your house? All right, sorry. Yep, yep, yep. Okay, sorry about that. Jake is back in his house. <sighs> to play a land, get to play Karanos here. One doesn't want to play magic anymore. It's certainly in a gate matchup. Not electrolyzed matchup. Not a relic matchup. Jacob. Blood, Blood Moon is great, right? 
I think this is what I want. I don't think I want these rejections. Do I want these shattering sprees? Is it worth keeping their thing off the table? I don't think spree is better than lightning bolt. Hey, new Zach. Glad you can catch us live. Yep. It's a good reminder for everyone being going for a good long stream today. I've been streaming most of the day. You can catch the replays of everything you've missed if you haven't been here since this morning on my YouTube channel. <sighs> yeah, I don't think it's correct to bring in the artifact hit either. I can see like maybe over one of the threats at the top end, but I kind of want threats to kill them. Nah, Relic's too awkward. I, I think Relic needs to have some amount of marginal upside because it is slightly awkward with our Snapcaster Mage. This seems fine, right? A little soft to a cavern. Most of our hands are soft to a cavern. They don't have a lot of caverns. They have one cavern. Hmm, I think since I drew this, maybe I was supposed to play the fetch land. Okay, it was kind of scary here. Yep. Explorer is interesting. We're just opting for blood moons here, right? We had our third land, and that's all we want, basically, at this point. Dealer's Choice. This is an interesting card on their sideboard. I haven't seen this one before. It seems interesting. This deck isn't super fast at beating faster combo decks, so it doesn't seem, doesn't seem like an awful choice. Ding. Guys are done. Boom, 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 ba, 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 da, 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 da. I played the amulet deck forever ago on stream. There's currently a bug on Magic Online with it that makes it kind of frustrating. So, I haven't been playing it mostly for that reason. I think I'm just going to remand this since I have the Blood Moon in my hand like a professional. They draw another thought sees. God, what a tilt. What a tilt. I can't I can't let that tracker resolve. Like that's that's just not allowed. So losing the blood moon kind of sucks there, but is what it is. Oh, you know what? I should have played the basic island here because I'm gonna need to remand that I'm gonna want to opt to this turn. So they get to recast their tracker this turn, but they don't get a clue off it at least, so we got that going for us. Yeah, I wish we could draw another Blood Moon too. Now I have to fetch a Steam Vents untapped here to do this, which feels kind of bad. The bottom of that for now, we're just not quite at that point of the game yet. think this is going to be like an end step cryptic bouncer tracker oh that's an interesting question holy doc yeah i didn't think about that yeah that's probably better we'll take it for four here oh huh interesting Really? Uh, I think I just remanned this, right? There you go. No, bouncing the bounce line doesn't do a whole lot.
So if they run back, no. Snap the ambush viper is really bad there. We've got we've already got our lands lined up. I'm gonna get to cryptic, counter the primeval titan, bounce the tireless tracker, and then next turn I get to snap cryptic, counter the primeval titan, bounce my snapcaster mage. So counter this, bounce this, like take your pressure off the table. And now next turn, I can Snapcaster my Cryptic Command. Do I just go ahead and play this out? Yeah, I think so. This is a little trick that you can do with your Snapcaster Mages and your Cryptic Commands. So we get to Snapcaster Mage, target my Cryptic Command, my cryptic command is going to counter their spell plus bounce my snapcaster mage back to my hand. So we get a get a rebuy on him later. So counter you, bounce you. Another negate. Spin me up. Probably snap opt here if they don't give us something to remand. Just gonna negate this. Just use my mana. Deny them a card. It could be exploring into things that I can't I can't do that to later. Hmm, that's annoying. Alright, so we're gonna snap opt in response here. Yeah, you're not wrong. Huh. That's probably fine, right? I can just, like, bolt them. And then we can Hulk bulk them. I kind of just run them down here. Seal of Primordium. Yeah, I don't care about that. I like the game's about that at this point. Oh, you know what? Maybe I should have negated that because then I could Hulk negate it next turn. Oh, it can kill Gear Hulk. Yeah, I should have negated that. Got it. Good call, chat. I forgot this card. Looks blue, so it doesn't doesn't register as an artifact. Yep, should have should have negated that. Now they're they're titans in the discard pile. We don't know they have a titan. Huh. They took Bajuka Bog back. Yeah, I'm still going to keep this, right? Because I can snap this bolt. So if I'd have negated this, they'd be dead here. Ooh, they might be dead anyways. Sweet. <laughs> Maybe they don't know they can kill it with the Gear Hulk either. Nope. Apparently not. All right, sweet. Mm -hmm. Two and one. God bless, God bless. Remand your spell, Blood Moon You. Sign me up. I mean, like, it could have just been like my opponents thinking the same thing I was, right? Like their 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 line in their head was that like this card kills it kills blood moon it doesn't kill gear hulk god bless all my subs <laughs> just the magic online shade
So this is actually interesting. Do I want to go mountain? I think I actually want to get my third blue source, right? And I have a remand for their first play. So I think I'm actually just going to pass the turn here. I think I'm actually just going to pass the turn here. I can remand or mana leak their first play. If I hadn't ripped the Scalding Turn there, I'd have just jammed the Blood Moon. But I think because I ripped the Scalding Turn, I should guarantee myself the ability to cast Cryptic Command. I mean, O-Stone doesn't really change anything, right? Like, they're still going to be able to play this down the line. This is why Tron's really good against Blood Moon. Bloodman keeps him honest for a turn. This is why there's a bunch of rejections on our sideboard. Chip is not easy. Wait, what? I... Resolves. Resolves. Every, no, just everybody stop. I just, I don't, I don't, just don't, don't think about it. Just don't, I need everybody to just calm, calm down. I need everybody to just calm down. It's okay. It's, it's okay. I promise. Just. <laughs> oh God. All right, I think this is how I want to board. <laughs> oh, just take the win and be happy, chat, right? Yep, just take the win. That's exactly correct. I don't know if Shattering Spree is good enough. It, like, it kills O-Stone, but, like, I have rejection for O-Stone. I'm going to slip it. <laughs> I mean, last time my opponent conceded when I played this card, so it must, it must be great. <laughs> Uh, they're playing traditional Tron, it looks like, so I don't think they're playing Chalice. This Bolt? Okay. So this Bolt has one purpose in this match. Deal three damage to my opponent, and Snapcaster deal three damage to my opponent. So we are shocking ourselves to Bolt my opponent here. We're pretty dead to this. It's fine. Everybody can siege when someone taps three lands. It's cool. It's cool.
Sounds fine. No, they're going to probably exile one of my lands. I'm going to bottom that. We're just looking for lands or blood moons at this point. So it's worth noting, I actually played the incorrect land here. I should have, I should have played the flooded strand on one or two, so that way I could fetch out the maximum number of islands before I ripped the blood moon. So things, things worth noting. I did technically sequence my lands in the wrong order here. Thankfully, I have this third, this third island already. But this definitely, this definitely was a sequencing mistake on my part. Like I can't, I can't snap cryptic command with the lands that I have right now, which is a big deal. How do I feel about counter their spell, bounce their oblivion stone? I feel good about that. Your Hulk, Batter Skull, Bolt. Not interested in this. I'm not interested in this. So we can remand the O Stone and then Torrential Gear Hulk counter draw the O Stone. But an island's pretty good. Yeah, where are our rejections? <sighs> Counter that one, draw a card. I think I want to leave the, the Torrential Gear Hulk in play just so I can kill my opponent. We have remands and negates here to hopefully kill them before they, they can get rid of this. Like, yeah, getting to untap now, this should mean we're in the clear. I don't know, I guess we have to attack them four times when we have two pieces of counter magic here. Why would I bounce a land? Why would I bounce a land? I have two counter spells. What am I afraid of? Like, World Breaker, exactly? And, like, even then, I'm not going to be able to race World Breaker if they have the seven lands. Let's negate this. Hold this remand for a Karn next turn. But I mean, like, we're not beating... If they have mana for Worldbreaker, we're not killing them with this card before that happens anyway. So, like, that's not a line. You, should, you shouldn't play around cards you can't beat. Playing around cards you can't beat is bad magic. Bolt snap, bolt untap, kill you. All, all with this tasty remand up. <laughs> oh, baby. 
Rejected. <laughs> Excellent. Excellent. All right. Onward, upward, backward, forward. Three and one. See if we can finish off this one strong. Everyone's having a great, great Sunday. Hanging out, playing some Magic the Gathering. 1,300 people hanging out here today. Thank you very much and welcome. If you're new, make sure you hit that follow button if you're enjoying what you see. If you're really enjoying what you see, you can also subscribe to support. And make sure you check out my YouTube channel as well, youtube.com forward slash Jeff Hoagland. There's days worth of modern content on there. You can also check out all the, any of the stream you missed today and lots of stuff on there. How does it feel to have it all? Basic Island Too Strong. This is a Blue Moon donation deck list. So one of my subscribers sent in some dollary dues for us to play this on stream. Yeah, decks like this have always been real. We see fringe success in modern. I really like the top end package that this deck has. The two worm coils to the two worm coils to torrential gear hulks specifically have been very good. I don't know how I feel about the Karanos and the Batter Skulls, but the the pair of each of the six drops has been great. All this hand's about to be real bad in this matchup. Um, I feel like our deck's not well constructed for a matchup like this. I feel like I want Steam Flogger boss with the cheers. I feel like I want more. Um, like we lost to Dredge, not having an anger in the top half of our deck game three. I really feel like. Um, I really feel like uh, I would like some more sweepers in my board. Yeah. yeah, this hand's not great against humans. If I find a red source, this bolt might do something, but we're not in a good spot for this for sure. About to get run O-V-E-R. Thinking for a red source. I'm gonna lose my lightning bolt to this idiot anyways. Uh, amulet does not want to play blood sun people people who think blood sun is going to go into amulet don't understand why the amulet deck is good the reason why the amulet deck is really good and consistent is because it's able to bounce to laria west with primeval titan and then go get another primeval titan and with blood sun you can't do that what's up Maybe they just have a bunch of lands in their hand and they're just going to attack us for three with this Kite Sail Freebooter every turn. I'm going to concede to Athalia's Lieutenant here. You need help, Jacob? Okay, I'm coming, buddy. Yeah, we just, we don't even have enough slots to board in here. We just, like, have so much Tron hate in our board, we just don't have enough slots for any of these other matchups. I'm gonna, like, leave Relic of Progenitus in my deck in this matchup. That can't be right. That can't be right. Yep. Yeah. 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 So, my primary feedback is going to be Will you do a deck tech for the donor after league? At the end of every donation league, we always kind of go through and talk about things I liked and things I didn't like, and we'll definitely do that at the end of here. Spree for Vile? Yeah, I guess that's fine, actually, because all of our other cards are just so terrible. Yeah, I like that. I like that call. Rich Shea with the host. Welcome to folks coming over from Rich's channel. We're finishing up a league with Blue Moon here, and then I'm not quite sure what we're doing next. I think maybe we'll do this league with Sultai Shadow and Legacy. Call it a day. Bum -ba -da -dum -ba -da -dum -ba -da 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 
Opponent's just entire deck is so good against us they don't know how to board. Do, 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 do. Yeah, yeah, on the play, we can definitely steal some games with Blood Moon. You're not, you're not wrong. <sighs> this hand just says everything I want. Everything I want out of life it just needs lands. Yeah, let's get lucky. Let's get lucky. Yeah, I do. I'll always, I always include them in the, 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 the giving feedback on the decks. So I always include in the the video when i post them on youtube because i know people can't always catch their decks live i'm just gonna keep this hand i think this hand is fine to keep um i feel like our chances of having everything we need with lands and spells at six is lower i have a couple of bolts that i can cast so like we run off a couple of i feel like and this is this is where mulliganing theory comes into play right i feel my probability of drawing two lands in a row with this hand is higher than the probability of me having a six that's better than this hand like, getting a 5 or 6 that's, like, super functional and super good. I don't... I'm just gonna... That's not constructive. Use, use your words. Use your words. Look at that. All right. Scoreboard. Now I really need a basic as land or a fetch land. Hey, KM Draven. Yeah, there's gonna be a bunch of, a bunch of YouTube content after today, that's for sure. What do we got? If they have a Thalia here, we can kill that. Yep. Go ahead and give her the old, the old, the old bolt of root. Basic island, please. Okay. Next best thing. Yep. Bottom. Top. Uh, no reason to shock here, right? Oh, actually, I should have kept that land, right? I should have. No, I need another basic island for this. It's just too much. It's just too much extra work, KM Draven. When I'm when I'm streaming, there's like six things going on already, and I just don't have time to update a match overlay on top of it. It's just a bandwidth thing. So hopefully, yeah, the mountain would have let me cast Karanos guaranteed on four on five, which would have been nice. Oh, that's really unlucky for us. That's fine. I think we're just dead here. Punish for not holding up Mana Leak. Noble Hierarch. It's Noble Hierarch. <sighs> I think we're dead. I guess I should have I guess I should have held up Mana Leak that turn and shocked myself. I don't think it really matters. Yeah. Yep, yep, super dead. Alrighty. So in 3-2, we lost to two different swarm decks. So like Dredge and Humans are different kind of swarm decks, but they're both they're both swarm decks at the core, right? So thoughts thoughts on the deck overall. Um Things, things I really liked. Uh, this cantrip suite felt sweet. Felt like just right. I didn't feel like I gummed up on cantrips too often, but I also felt like I had I had enough to cast when I was looking for them. Um, these four cards at our top end was great. I really enjoyed those. Uh, Banner Skull was okay. Karanos was kind of kind of mediocre, right? Karanos felt like it just like having a five drop that didn't impact the board felt really bad. 
It doesn't, it's like the fact it doesn't impact the board, like Banner Skull and Worm Coil and Torrential Gear Hulk, like all of these cards are cards that are like good bombs that are grindy against other, other mid range and control decks, but they also have immediate board impact in the matches where I need to have an impact on the board when I play my bomb. And Karanos just doesn't have that same effect. Um, the board felt like it was maybe a little bit too over focused against the aggressive decks I played against. I just felt like I didn't have enough enough tools to bring in i think at a minimum i would like a third anger of the gods <sighs> probably just some extra spot removal too in the sideboard like you could a really easy way to hedge a matchup like dredge with this deck while hedging other decks generically is like playing some cards like magma spray in my sideboard would be reasonable yeah, but like Torrential Gear Hulk and Batter Skull are also good against Jeskai Control. Like these cards also generate card advantage against Jeskai Control. So we finished 3 2. We dropped a match to Dredge and we dropped a match, that last match to Humans. I don't know if I'm sold on these relics in the main deck being good or not. They stole us a game one against Dredge, but they were also awkward with Snapcaster Mage a couple of times. So I don't know if I'd be 100% sold on that. Oh, a braid. That's actually a great answer. I think a braid is a great magic card. New Zach, great suggestion. These shattering sprees are like kind of okay, but I think um you could like easily like plus an anger and like two to three a braid sounds fantastic. A sweeper a sweeper in the main deck could be reasonable too. I think that could be that could be fine as well. But yeah, I definitely I love the idea of a braid in this deck. What do you need, buddy? And I'll be right back. We're going to help my toddler, and then we're going to fix, we're going to fix what, what I would change. What's up? Can we build your house? Are you good? Okay. I kind of like the idea of Anger of the Gods. The third damage is really important against humans, and the exiling effect is really important against uh, against Dredge. So I think <laughs> I think I would like I think I would like that. Shackles could be okay too. We have a lot of artifact threats anyway, so shackles could be okay. Sweltering Suns and E card. Yeah, so just like little little hedges like that. I really like the idea of a braid. I think a braid's a great suggestion. And then maybe like like three negates, two rejections is probably enough against Tron. Probably. You'd want to test it more. I definitely think we stole that matchup against Tron a little bit that we played, especially their early concession in the first game, but I think seven counter spells for them is probably a little excessive. Someone earlier talked about disdainful stroke being a little bit more flexible counter spell. I kind of like that idea too, so. You know, take it, take it for what it is. Uh, what do we want to do next? I think we're gonna go back to 